Happy Friday, gentlemen and gentlewomen. Welcome back. This week, we find out which jobs are the most hated in all of the Army. And it may come to a shock to most of you that it isn't being an MP. So stay tuned to find out which MOSs take the shit flavored cake and more military news on this week's episode of The Debrief. <laughs> Jumping right into the needy greedy, the Army Times has published an article titled, These Army Jobs Have the Highest Turnover, which is simply put as, which jobs suck so much that nobody wants to re-enlist and keep doing them. There can be numerous factors involved in a soldier's decision to either re-enlist or separate and try out their luck in the cold, dark, real world. Some of those factors in my eyes are leadership, quality of life, fulfillment from doing the job, etc, etc, etc. Now, even if most of those factors were met, and you have these MOSs, the Army believes you would still probably choose to leave. So what exactly are these jobs? For the male soldier demographic, we have Criminal Investigation Division Special Agent, so CID, with a retention rate of 38%, Diagnostic Equipment Maintenance Specialist, with a retention rate of 44%, and Cable Systems Installer Maintainer at 48%. For our females, we have Carpentry and Masonry Specialist at 23%, and back again, Diagnostic Equipment Maintenance Specialist at 23%, and Unmanned Aircraft Repair at 33%. I figured uh, unmanned would have meant uh, more women present. <laughs> Terrible joke. Didn't hit it all. Anyways, I was actually super curious as to why being a diagnostic equipment maintenance specialist out of all these jobs was such a terrible thing because in all honesty I have never heard of this MOS before so I looked into some specifics and it became very apparent very quickly. A 94 hotel or test measurement and diagnostic equipment maintenance support specialist, long title, requires an enlistee to attend 10 weeks of basic training and a 33 week AIT or advanced individual training. Now I thought to myself, wow, these guys must have some crazy responsibilities to be in training for almost a year almost a year before going to their units, so I looked into their job description and it reads verbatim, quote, as a test measurement diagnostic equipment maintenance support specialist, say that five times fast, you'll maintain the Army's precision instruments, keeping them in top working order and condition and ensuring they are always accurate. You'll calibrate and repair test equipment, and you'll adjust and synchronize watches, clocks, and timers. You'll learn electronic theory, how to read schematics, indirect and alternation currents, and resistant and circuit analysis. So basically, a year of schooling to be able to program the clock sitting on Sergeant Major's desks. Man. No wonder people are running away from this MOS faster than a new private marrying the local stripper. But it does do my heart good to learn that the good old boys in the infantry are still too dumb enough to soften up and get out. So hats off to you psychopaths and good luck to those of you watching this that have one of those MOSs I previously mentioned. If you want to know more about the other branches and what MOSs suck in those ones, go check out the article on the Army Times websites to see if your job sucks too. On to our next piece of news. Now, the Army is requesting 250 infantry and armor officers willing to transfer to support jobs in the near future. The Army has stated that this is strictly a volunteer basis and won't be forcing any brass to change teams anytime soon. Now the thought of a salty infantry officer switching over and taking command of a bunch of finance nerds brings me the greatest amount of joy. And I'm sure on the flip side of that, the adjutant general signal and finance corps are probably in their pants right now at the thought of they might have to actually try 
on PT test now. Drop and give me 20. Ah! <clears throat> All right, one. We're going for one. And they might have to actually do their jobs and do their jobs well when they get a new boss. And 20. The armor and infantry cores are being reported to be over strength. Which to me is honestly no surprise at all since all the chads looking to be officers anyways go to infantry and armor. So if you listen to the PCFM podcast and you've heard Izzy and I talk about the enlisted life and how mean we can be to each other, specifically in the Ranger Regiment because Special Forces is mature, I guess. I'm here to tell you that the officer corps makes us look like a bunch of babies on how senior officers talk to junior officers. It's straight disrespect. This might be only how the infantry brass communicates with each other, but I would pay good money to watch one try to adjust to the laid back lifestyle that is anything other than the infantry corps. But all jokes aside, I think this would be an amazing opportunity and a great break for those of you armor and infantry guys listening to this right now who need a change of pace I know the job can be extremely draining, and if you're hoping to play the long game, this could be a really good idea and opportunity for you to just kick back, relax, and knock out some years. Our final piece of news today involves something every veteran can probably relate to, and that is stealing from the military. If you have never stolen from the military, you are what we call a freaking liar. Whether it be company time, MREs for when your pay doesn't go through and you need to eat, or just some knickknacks you pocketed from the supply room, please don't feel guilty because we've all done it. But not to the level of Janet Yamanaka Mello, a civilian financial program manager at Fort Sam Houston, Texas. Now, Janet is a civilian worker who is accused of participating in an alleged scam, stealing $100 million worth of military funds to pay for her lavish lifestyle. She is said to have used this money to amass a real estate portfolio of 31 properties, a fleet of 78 vehicles, more than $18 million in various bank accounts linked to her, and finally, a quite pricey jewelry collection. Nice, Janet. Now, I can understand how nobody knew where any of this money was going for the longest time since, I don't know, you know, uh, the Pentagon can't seem to pass an audit to save its life. Ouch! Oh! No, no, stop. Sick burn, bro! Sick burn! Too soon? The answer is no. Get your shit together. But I am really impressed, not by the stealing, but by Janet's tasting cars. It says here in the article that among the alleged fleet of vehicles, she had a 67 Camaro SS, ooh, a 66 Ford Mustang, ah, and a 54 Corvette. Nice, Janet. Now, if those cars aren't worth stealing millions from the government, I don't know what is. Of course, I kid. But the reality is that this money could have done so, so much more for troop welfare. Like actually getting soldiers the gear they need and promoting the overall readiness of the military. $100 million isn't a small amount by any means. And if the allegations are true, I hope, I hope that she is thrown into a small cramped cell with a large transgender prisoner named Biscuits and gets what's coming for her. So that is going to wrap it up for this week's episode of The Debrief. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please click that like button and hit the subscribe button. Check out our other content such as the first formation with Izzy and the awesome shorts our producer Chris has been uploading as of recently. Leave a comment saying which piece of news was your favorite and have a safe and impactful weekend, my friends. My name is Cameron Fath. See you next week on The Debrief.